Hey guys, Scott from Aristocop.com here. And Seth from MyWinningYourMouth.com. And together, the three of us, it's one, two, three, we are Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club. Welcome, boy. Welcome. And welcome. We're just going to call you, you, today. <laughs> welcome, you. <laughs> How's you doing? It's good to, good to have you with us today, you. Oh, what's going on? Oh, we're going to smoke that. We talked that. about it for weeks. We're going to smoke that. All right. Well, I We guess, fought it off as long as we can. I guess I'm going back to the shortstop then. We're going to, if I can get it, if, if, if I, if it, if it, right. if it'll open for Probably me. the perfect corn cob pipe, and really the perfect <laughs> pipe, since these are less than like four bucks. It's called the shortstop. And uh, this and some of the miniature pipes are fantastic for just tasting samples of things. And, uh. A little promotional, but that's really the pipe to smoke questionable tobacco with. Um, I'm a real fan of the Morgan Nose Warmer, but look at the, the difference in size between these two. All right, yeah, this is a bit of a commitment here. Here we go. All right, so this, this is from Lane Limited. Oh, that's... This is called Crown Achievement. I don't know that I've ever seen... Oh, a clear a plastic. Plastic. Cover. Yeah. yeah, they're so used to shipping their tobacco in a big, giant, five-pound plastic bag. That's what it is. Anyway, Lane has, uh, in, in recent months, begun to ship tobacco in tins. And part of that is they know that, that not everybody wants to purchase bulk tobacco, no-name bulk tobacco from a local tobacconist. A lot of folks like trying tobacco in tins. Mm-hmm. And it does give you something to kind of sort of... Tote it around in. Yeah, at least to tote it. So they've been uh, been doing this with a couple tobaccos here recently. I'm smoking in this thing. What is this? What is it? Uh, let's see. What is that? I don't know. Don't it won't say on there. Tobacco. I want to say that that's... Um, like the either the Tom Sawyer or the Huck Finn. The real Tom Sawyer? Yeah, it's the real Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yes. Imagine that I put that song in here. Uh, I'm not going to because I don't want this to get pulled for copyright violation. Yeah. But uh, go ahead and sing it amongst yourselves. Oh, yeah, that's it. All right, I'm going to put that down. <laughs> Uh, I got nothing to show today, but I do have a, a topic that we have mentioned a couple times that we would talk about, and that is communication. And and what I mean by that is, I've I've had some people who have asked some questions about their comments on these videos, and they I think were waiting for a response from me, or even from Boy, and it didn't come. And I want to explain that, and I also want to explain. The best way of commuting, communicating with Aristocob.com, the company, not the me. And, and also the me as well. So first off, I need to explain that Mark Ben's Breakfast Club is actually a channel that Seth set up under his Google profile. And he shared that account with me so I can switch my profiles and I can log in and I can comment as Mark Ben's Breakfast Club. I can I can do annotations, things like that on the videos. But as soon as I'm done with that, I switch out and then I'm Aristocob for the week. And unless I check back in, which I, I try to, I try on, on Wednesdays, maybe even Thursdays to check and see if anybody's commented. Um, but if they've not commented, or if you do comment, you, um, whoa, get something in my there. If you comment, I don't see it. Especially oh, if on. you comment on an old video. Right. I guess um, that's my point. You know, he checks the newest videos, but if you comment on something older, send in a, a message. I don't see it. He doesn't see it. The other thing is, I think most of you that, that are regular viewers and commenters know by now that if he's commenting, he's commenting as Aristocob. If there's a comment as Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club, 98% of the time it's me. 98% of the time I comment, I leave my name, I sign my name, just so there's no question. Mm -hmm. um, now, and if I leave a comment on your comment, so let's say you, today you leave a comment, I'll go and I'll check it for the next day, day and a half or so, 
I'll leave a comment as Aristocob. You can then reply, and then I do get that because you're getting sending a reply back to me, and I think so you get copied on that too, don't you? I don't know. Yeah, because it's, it's any comment that's posted on the video you're going to see. Um, the people with Google Plus have found that they can do plus Aristocob, and then that all, if, you're, mm. if they're saying in a comment or mentioning something in a comment, um, they can do that, and then that'll send me a message. But otherwise, I don't see it. So, the second part of that, I do get the comments. You're at work. I am notoriously bad at replying, um, especially now. Uh, and, and if anyone has noticed, in the last eight months, it's gone. It's gotten even worse because yeah, I'm at work and my job is is pretty highly demanding, um, and so I'm working during work hours. I don't check. I, I don't. I don't look at it. I don't leave anything i'm not checking at all during work um and uh and outside of work i try not to be on my computer too much um because i i've got a wife two kids two young kids at home um who i get to see less than i would like to anyway um and so i'm just i'm, I'm out right. of that loop but all that said we absolutely enjoy connecting with you via comments um, and so we're not telling you don't comment because we're not going to comment back. We will try to have a two-way conversation uh, via the comments here. I try to when when I can. I read every comment. Uh, I do those come into my email. And I do read every single one, and um, depending on my availability, I'm also really bad. Speaking of communication, when I read something or see a message, I think, oh, I need to resp- reply to that. If I don't do it in the moment, yeah. I forget about it. That happens. And, it happens with my family quite often. Um, text messages, emails, voicemails. I'll think, hey, I need to reply to that. Oh, but I've got to do such and such first. And if I don't do it immediately, I forget. Completely forget. So what's the lesson for you in that? Just lower expectations. <laughs> so they're, not, they're not expecting me to reply. Which is what I've tried to do over the uh, last eight months. Haven't I? Yeah. Sorry. Another thing recently, uh, people have emailed me at aristocob uh, at gmail.com. My, that's my email address, aristocob at gmail.com. Um, and again, if you've got a question, hey, I got this pipe in an eBay auction, you can send a picture, ask me a question about it. Um, people who have questions, pre-order questions, hey, I'm looking, does this bit fit this pipe, things like that. That's where you want to communicate with me about that. However, once you're placing an order, or you've got a specific question about you know, placing that order, hey, when is this going to ship? Or right there, or there you're going to want to communicate with my wife Jandy, and her email address is aristocob.orders at gmail.com. All right, so we'll we'll put that in the doobly doo below, and uh, if you click the message on our website you're communicating with jandy now why are you communicating with jandy well because about 60 70 percent of my time i'm on the road Um, i travel for my business and uh, jandy is absolutely running the day-to-day operations the whole reason why we have a great reputation of shipping orders on time is a hundred percent due to jandy Um, And, uh, you know, if an order gets screwed up, that's usually because I was home and was able to help. (laughs) And I'm not kidding. This is where my dyslexia gets me in trouble. I I, I misread orders and mispick. So for the most part, we try to let Jandy take care of that. Or or I'll, I'll have two packing slips. And this happens unbelievably often where we have two similar names. You know, there's two Josephs that have ordered on the same day, and one's, you know, Joseph Schmidt, and the other one's Joseph Smith. Whew, that'll mess me up. So anyway, uh, for those kind of communications, you will notice also when Jandy communicates with you directly, let's say that you've placed an order and she wants to let you know about something, availability issues or something, she will always CC me in that communication so that she knows that I know and I know that she knows what's what's going on if there's any questions you know, I can be brought into the loop at that point. Do you CC her when people send you questions? Uh, not if they're questions about, again, things like, hey, I bought this or I got to, you know. It's it just occasionally what I'll do is I'll end up forwarding her a message, especially if someone ends up emailing me about an order status right. or about something like that. Because he doesn't know. 
I, I don't know. And usually what I'll do is I'll reply back and say, you'll notice I've copied my wife in this. She'll get you your answer. And then she does, does it so accurately and so quickly and proficiently. So there's that. He's just the talking head of the business. On the pretty face. <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, but but that's why we're successful, and that's why we have been successful in a number of ventures that we have been involved in. Is I'm a bit of a dreamer, I'm a bit of a salesman, and in a marketer. And Jandy is absolutely the doer. She's great at developing systems and organization, and uh, and getting things done accurately. So, aren't you an activator as well? Is that one of your strengths? Yeah. Was it? Uh, no. Okay. What was it? I don't know. Activator. I think you're the you're the I, activator. I am. You're the activator it. that don't I don't it's not it, it is. No, I don't think I'm an activator. Well it's number six then. <laughs> it's high up there for you. Uh cre- this tobacco I creativity is my highest one. Mm. So I I like this. Yeah, no, I'm not an activator. I, I ideation, ideation is number right. one. I, I like I like this tobacco yeah. because on the frontage of my tongue, the tip of my tongue, it, it it's cooling. It almost has like a menthol. Really? Kind of cool, yeah. It's bizarre. It's cooling your tongue. I mean, it's not like heat-wise, but you know how menthol, you, yeah. you kind of breathe in and it has that effect? It, it, it has that effect. But there's no is. menthol. In, I, I don't, don't pick up I, any menthol. Maybe there no, is. The, the fl- Maybe the, there is. There could be. I, it doesn't taste like menthol, but it, it seems to have that. It's, it might be the perique that was added uh, 11 <laughs> years here. ago. Um, or something in it, but it's, uh, I'm digging it. I know so, that you are as well. Yeah, that's why my pipe is down there. So, a couple of other things. Uh, we are in the middle of Cobb Foolery Month, and if you're interested in, in entering a Cobb Mod contest, I would encourage you to get involved in that. I have in front of me uh, one of our, this is not a Cobb Wasp uh, that, that we sold. This is one that was made for me by um, Chris Morgan. It's it's one of only three that actually has his imprint on the bottom. Hmm. You see that? Yeah. Um, but this was one of the entries in a contest a couple years ago. I, I smoked this one last week. This is my pierced ear that I did last year. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities to, to win, and more importantly, it's fun to share and look at what other guys are doing and encourage them. And... Uh, be sure to check that out. If you do anything interesting, uh, film it. And well, that's post actually it. that's actually one of the requirements this year. Well, yeah, I I, I don't expect beyond you, just submitting it there. Share it on yeah, I don't I don't expect you to show a build video, but I do expect you to shoot a video and share a little bit about your pipe. So that that's actually part of this year's. But if you uh, got the time and if you got a channel. Shoot a build video too. Yeah, why not? Show you show show the process. Yeah, if you don't mind sharing. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, and uh, then we can get to our question, is about Nashville, and that has been a question that we've thrown around quite a bit. And then I had a meeting this week that I realized, dang it, um, I'm going to be a master of ceremonies at a national convention in uh, Salt Lake City. And that begins on Sunday. Now, I thought maybe there'd be a chance that I could get to the show and then go out from there. But I'm expected to be there all day Saturday. So I got to fly out there Saturday and I'm, I'm, I can't do it. That's not Nashville. I can't do Nashville this year. So I'm, I'm bummed about that. That'll be the first time in the three years that it has been in existence that we will not make the pipe show. Well, for, at least I won't make the pipe for show. For shame. How about you? I probably won't be there. I I probably won't be there. Um, without him going, I would have to work all day Friday and then leave about 5 o'clock. And any of you that were there last year know how uh, abysmally poor that worked out for me. My car just exploded and had to go back at a second car. Ended up getting to the hotel around 3 or 4 a.m. Um, yeah. Getting up the next morning for Saturday. One day show. It ended up not being worth it, and not to say that, that would happen again, but um, there's a there's a small chance that I will be there um, if I find a, a buddy or two that might want to go with me. Road trip. But uh, it, unless that happens, I, I probably won't make it. Hmm. 
I probably won't. Bummer. Bummer. Yeah. But uh, it's next go. week. Go have it's, fun. So. Uh, tell us all about it. And we look forward to seeing videos and pictures from that. All right. So, what was our question this week? I gave this some thought. Oldest and friend. You didn't want to do it. Oh, your oldest friend. And our question that I think still remains unanswered is it the person you've known the longest or is it the person who is the oldest? And I think it's the person we've known the longest. Yeah, probably. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the oldest friend that I still have active communication with um, is actually a couple people. It's people I know from junior high school church, and that is my brother-in-law, Chris, mm -hmm. my brother-in-law, David, and David's brother, Tim. Mm. Those, those three I've known since just before seventh grade. And... Uh, Beyond that, because we moved around so much as kids, being military brats, I never made really deep friendships and had to had to move on pretty quickly. So uh, I, I've it's funny I've connected up every now and then with an old friend from elementary school, um, but those those were just you know curiosities and never really blossomed into you know lasting friendships. It's like so you uh, you still a, a safety patrolman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you helping kids cross crosswalks because that's what you were doing the last time I saw you. Uh, no, so anyway, how about you? Um, oldest friend, oldest friend would have to be uh, probably Aaron Kennedy, um, my brother-in-law David Kennedy, yeah, and Tim Kennedy. It's uh, Tim Kennedy's daughter. Yeah. Um, but you know, since since becoming adults and having our families, they they live in Kentucky. Um, you know, we, we don't don't stay in contact like we used to. Um, so barring that, um, one of my one of my oldest friends is my wife. Uh, we've known each other sixteen years. Um, we met in my freshman year of high school. Um, we had moved from Ohio. Um, uh, the weekend before school started and um and uh so uh, clayton is, is another friend yeah. who i met i met him the very first day of school and then um allison was in one of my uh, she's in one of my classes choir class um we didn't become friends until a little bit later in the school year um well to hear her tell it, we didn't become friends until about six years later. Uh, <laughs> she she, she tolerated like me. Seth. she tolerated me up up to that point um but yeah, but like all Markwood men, he wore, wore her, her out. He woo, he wooed her, wooed her hard. That's right. Uh, <laughs> long... I told him as a kid. I said, you know, some men have money and some men have looks. We Markwood men have to wear our women down. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, he did it. Congratulations, son. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I mean, we we think I, you know, she and I talk about that periodically. That really, I don't have any friendships. Um, before starting high school in North Carolina that have continued to this point. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there are a couple people that follow on Facebook. Even even some of my uh, close camp friends. I didn't start attending camp until we lived here, too. Um, so, you know, I've, I've got friends in that same... Living you know, here since 1999. Right. That's right. So, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of friendships um, in that... 16, 15, 14 year range um, that I still maintain, but really nothing, nothing before that. Back, you know, 16 years ago, there wasn't uh, the internet had just started, and um, there weren't great ways to keep in contact with people. And kind of going back to some of those friendships is just awkward after so much time has passed. And yeah, so. you think about again, what did you have in common? Mm -hmm. um, remember how we used to like to kick the kickball in in uh, at recess? Mm -hmm. You still into that? Yeah, uh, Foursquare. Um, <laughs> Foursquare. Yeah, uh, my. I'm in this Foursquare. My um, one of my best friendships, um, the best man at my wedding, Josh. Um, I've known for 12 years since uh, freshman year of college, since 2003. So, got some long, long friendships. All right. So, how about you? Here's where you leave the comment about this week's question. We'd love to know. Who your oldest friend is. You're and, one of and, my oldest friends. And tell us a little bit about him. And you know what? 
Some of these questions are perfect VR material for those of you who are looking for a reason to turn your camera on. Go ahead and answer this week's question and share, share it in a video. Uh, next week's question, something for you guys to ponder, is what benefit do you bring to the group when you hang out with friends? Mm. Reflection time. Yeah, it is. Maybe you'll want to pull some of your friends and ask them. You probably don't. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really good question. I'm looking forward to hearing your answer to that one and your answer. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, You guys make it a great week, and uh, see you again next week. Bye.